Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Annual accessible camp programming put on by Easter Seals Ontario. It's back, back in full force for the summer as of this past weekend. Here to tell you more is Kevin Collins. Kevin is the organization's president and CEO. Kevin, thank you for making time this morning. Uh, thank you so much, Dave, for having me. Kevin, I know these camps are much beloved, but where are they taking place across the province? So we have two fully accessible summer camps here in the province of Ontario. Uh, camp Wood Eden is near London, Ontario, and Camp Marywood is just near Perth. Nice, a little bit of Western Ontario and a little bit of Eastern Ontario represented there. Absolutely. Who are, who are the people who the camps are meant to serve? So camps are, these camps are set up for uh, kids with physical disabilities allowing them the opportunity to be in an environment where it's fully accessible. Uh, they can participate in a wide variety of programs. And, uh, you know, again, um, from ages eight up to 18 years of age. And just recently, we introduced uh, a program called the Voyager program uh, for campers 19 to 36 years of age that at both of our locations. We found that once our kids had aged out, uh, once the campers had aged out, there really wasn't a place for them to go. So we uh, we opened up this program and it has been uh, amazingly successful. The, they were uh, the first campers that came on board last Friday and, and uh, they're currently enjoying time. What do some of the activities and some of the spaces look like on the grounds of the camp that make them so accessible and inclusive? Well, both camps are unique. Um, the camp near Perth is is located right on the Rideau River, oh. Rideau Lake, and oh. so basically it offers sailing, canoeing, fishing, as well as we have a swimming pool there, archery, arts and crafts, life skills, um, and then uh, the camp in London um, is infamous for our high ropes course. We've got a 75 foot high ropes course there where kids can swing, they can follow the trail through. Um, and again, it's completely accessible. You know, our swimming pools, they they offer the lifts for entering the pools. The campfires have wheelchair accessible campfire pits, archery. Um, we offer stands for the bow so the kids can participate. And again, as I mentioned, the high ropes course, fully accessible high ropes course. It's one of the largest in North America. Um, and then the swing that's, that's adjacent to it is accessible and it's 75 feet high. Wow, wow, definitely some uh, adventure thrill-seeking going on right there. How, no doubt. I, I mentioned that the camps have really garnered a positive response. They're so, so well thought of amongst the community, but how have they evolved over the years? Well, you know, we've been in the camping business. Uh, we actually, Easter Seals Ontario opened our first camp in 1937, um, a camp up in Collingwood, a Blue Mountain camp. Um, the, the two current camps that we have uh, operating, Wood Eden was established in 1946 and Marywood was in 1948. And so basically, you know, through the years um, with technology and, and with, uh, you know, accessibility, making sure that pathways and doorways, accessible doors, uh, washrooms, bedrooms, dining halls, everything has been, you know, to the best of our ability modernized so that every child with a disability can have an opportunity to participate and be part of it. Why was that so important when it came to making the camp space inclusive? Because I know Easter Seals does a lot of great work all year round mm -hmm. in a lot of different areas, but why was this an area of priority or how did this come about as an area of priority? Well, it, you know, again, through our relationships back in the early days with local service clubs, particularly Rotary clubs, um, those members felt it was a necessity to ensure that there's inclusivity for kids with physical disabilities or with disabilities. And so, you know, they invested a lot of time, money, and, and effort to ensure that these opportunities were provided. And we've been very, very, very thankful for, you know, like the past 86 years to be able to maintain that um, through our donors who support our programs um, and ensuring that that uh, any child with a disability that wants an opportunity to go to camp gets to go to camp. And mm. the other side of the coin too, Dave, is that is so important is the respite for our parents. You know, um, and, and in some cases, most cases, a lot of these kids require 24-7, 365 days a year care. And so by giving 
the, the parents an opportunity to feel comfortable sending their child to one of our camps. It gives them an opportunity to rejuvenate their batteries, particularly if there's siblings involved in the family. You know, that gives them a time to kind of spend together knowing that their child is, is safe, learning, building friendships. Mm. Um, and it's, it's just an amazing opportunity. Yeah, it's a life experience thing that you want people mm -hmm. to know they can do and they can have to get out and spend a little bit of time with nature because so oftentimes, I know for myself as someone with a disability who can't drive, I'm reliant mm -hmm. upon other people to bring me to nature. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just a city dweller through and through, uh, which is which has its own merits, I suppose. But Kevin, yeah. you, you mentioned that notion of, of offering a care for the, for the campers while they're up there. Mm -hmm. Certainly when you're talking about things like rope courses and archery and sailing, there's going to be a lot that goes in to the safety side, right? To make sure the camps are properly prepared, staff is well trained. How much of an yeah. undertaking is that from you and your colleagues to make sure that everything is uh, hunky-dory and spick and span and yeah. top tier for when folks get up to the campsites? Yeah, and, it, and it's a great point, David. I mean, we are so fortunate. To, I got to tell you, one um, being in my role now as president CEO, and, and I also had an opportunity being born with a disability myself with cerebral palsy. I got to go to these camps as a kid for eight summers, and the staff members, the young staff members that are part of these programs, are unbelievable individuals um their passion their dedication you know they're coming to learn about working with kids with disabilities sharing their experiences of a variety of different programs but you know it could be the fact that they're going on to be you know school teachers they're going on to be doctors nurses eas psws this is a op great opportunity for them to gain the valuable practical experiences um, and helps them as they go forward on to you know, further, furthering their education or their careers. And so, again, we can't do this. We start the training with our leadership teams back in, in uh, the end of March, beginning of April. And the, the campers, the staff actually are at the property at the beginning of June with the campers coming in at the end of June. So there's extensive training, um, you know, trying to work with the individual staff members to ensure that their health and safety is is taken care of as well through this process because it's grueling it's a lot of work and and uh but the rewards on both sides is is uh it really does make it worthwhile there is a commonality there for camp counselors yes those summers can be really difficult but they're also very very enriching and it's amazing mm -hmm. for the campers as well uh you mentioned how this ends up being a career opportunity for a few of them or it's been a jumping off point my sister who works in special education that's how she got her start she worked at a camp in quebec for kids with developmental disabilities and mm -hmm. just by happenstance right like she was already well into her university life boom pivot her whole life changed and now she's someone who's who's impacting the world in a different way and it's all because of that experience at a camp it's really remarkable what these camps can be for people absolutely and and i can honestly say um through the the support and dedication that i received at, at a young age going to these camps it has really allowed me to do what i do today to be able to go out and share the incredible stories that our campers share with us as well as uh from their families you know again i hear it from parents every day how thankful they are that there are these opportunities that these kids can go and learn these incredible skills and and, and build lifelong friendships you know not only mm. with other campers but also with staff members. I mean, friendships that last forever. Yeah. Kevin, uh, nostalgia can be a dangerous game, but you mentioned you were a camper for eight years. What are some of your fondest memories of camp? You know what? I had two younger brothers growing up who were able-bodied and, and quite active in sports and participating in a variety of different activities. And, and I would get to go and, you know, be the scorekeeper, or just, just, you know, helping out at different things. But going to camp, was an opportunity for me to be the best of what I could be, whether it was wheelchair basketball, whether it was archery, swimming. Um, it, it just, it, it allowed me to be who I wanted to be. But the other more important thing was it's, it put me in an environment where I was communicating and learning from other kids who were dealing with similar challenges that I was dealing on a day-to-day -day basis with my disability. And, you know, hearing how they dealt with it and sharing how I dealt with it. And, you know, it just, it really, it, it helped build confidence. 
um, and and just awareness of the fact that you're not in this alone. And, uh, you know, uh, st stuff like that, I, I cherish and I take with me each and every day. And, you know, I, I kind of use it as an escape goat day. But uh, when I get to go visit the summer camps um, I, in my role, it's it for me, it's really a battery rejuvenation day, because I get to spend the day with the kids and the counselors learning again from them, how can we make things better? What what are things that you know are you're enjoying? We want to do. Uh, it, it's just it's a great great atmosphere. EasterSealsCamps.org. EasterSealsCamps.org is the website for more points <laughs> of communication. But Kevin, is it too late? Maybe you've uh, maybe you've light, you've lit up a couple eardrums here. You've 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 tickled some taste buds. Is it too late for folks to get involved for the programming this summer? No, we've got, we still have some space available, um, you know, but, but please take a look at the website, as you said, EasterSealsCamps.org and uh, register as quickly as you can because they will and are filling up. Um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, Dave, there was still some apprehension as to, you know, the, the safety factor. But the great thing about what we've learned from this process is, you know, we've set up um, special areas for isolation in, in, the, in the event that we do have something that does happen, you know, somebody gets sick, or whatever, mm. we've taken every precaution to make sure that every child, every camper has the best experience possible. And it also provides the confidence to the parents to know that their child will be safe and enjoyable. Kevin, this is fantastic. Thank you to you and your colleagues for all the work that you do. And thank you for taking a little bit of time this morning to tell me more about it. That's my pleasure, Dave. Thank you so much for having us. That's Kevin Collins, President and CEO of Easter Seals Ontario. And again, for more information on those accessible camps, EasterSealsCamps.org. That's EasterSealsCamps.org. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.